Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's July 1st, start of a new month, start of a new quarter, 6.30 a.m. My name is Amal. I'm going to do a morning crypto and market analysis. All right. So let's get to it. Um, I didn't really see anything in terms of news that was uh, anything worthy talking about. Like, let's check out the headlines, right? Um, <clears throat> most people are speculating, again, you know, how the previous quarter ended and how the next quarter is going to start looking up. And I think for the most part, when you start looking at the monthly or uh, quarterly candle, nothing too spectacular. I think the quarterly looks a little bit better, but again, nothing too spectacular. Um, I'll explain, you know, exactly why uh, the quarterly candle isn't anything uh, to write home about. Uh, we did have a digital dollar meeting in the U.S. Uh, banking committee yesterday. I don't think anything special came out of it. Um, let me see here. Oh, so this is interesting. Okay. So the S&P 500 has been rallying, um, you know, since yesterday or Monday, basically. Um, and I think for the most part, m most people are thinking that the S&P 500 uh, at least is going to have a V-shaped recovery. And then that probably means that Bitcoin's going to do pretty well because of that. Um, I'm kind of here to tell you that it is not necessary that even when the S&P 500 pushes up, that Bitcoin is going to push up you know, towards the, the real resistance of 10,500 or 10,600. It's very possible that Bitcoin stays where it is keeps consolidating in this, you know, sideways thing that we've been doing and possibly even dump because Bitcoin has actually already broken below previous um, key SR levels, key support and resistance levels. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay. So just, you know, some, some basic uh, pieces of news. And then, you know, of course, like if you look on my Twitter feed, all right. Um, I also have an explanation of this whole debacle about you know why GBTC buying all this Bitcoin is is pretty much meaningless, okay? Uh, and I think it's right here, so you can go check it out. About why Grayscale buying all this Bitcoin doesn't really mean anything. This is one of the tweets. I think there's another one somewhere over here. I think this one right here, Ryan Watkins. All right, make sure you guys read this and understand why grayscale buying all this bitcoin doesn't really mean anything okay it could be arbitrage it could be the trust itself maybe um you know having some bigger players utilize the premiums on gbtc it, it could be many number of things okay it could also be just you know uh federal or sec rules that grayscale has to buy x amount of bitcoin because of you know they have so many outstanding purchases i i don't really know okay but it definitely doesn't mean that just because Grayscale is buying all this Bitcoin that it's definitely bullish. That is my main concern. And I've been seeing this go around the crypto Twitter uh, space and random people posting about it. It kind of annoys me because people don't know, you know exactly why things are happening. They just know that they're happening and that's just you know, uh, apparently bullish. Uh, and so don't be sheep that kind of falls into this narrative that every little thing that happens for the purchase of Bitcoin or this small positive news, like the freaking PayPal rumor that we had a couple of weeks ago, that all of it just means positive. Some of it is just a lie. Some of it is just, you know, fabricated information. Some of it is real, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Okay. Because here's the thing. If you understand technical analysis, right, and if you believe in it, well, those things are, are reflected in price or they're going to be priced in well ahead of the news event. So let's just say, you know, the PayPal thing was true and it came out like over here somewhere, right? A couple of days back. Well, you could make the argument that maybe some of this was factoring in, you know, the having event as well as maybe the PayPal news. Okay. But then even then what you should question yourself on is wait a second, well, if that's true, why didn't we break past a critical resistance right there of 10,600? We should be breaking past that, right? That's the true resistance level. But in fact, what we've really done is 
know, we've put in these highs, lower highs, lower highs again, lower highs again, and then lower highs again. So in fact, we haven't really done, done anything, nor have we accomplished a uh, break past any key resistance levels. So these are the things that you need to ask yourself. Okay, when you see a piece of news, when you see this whole thing about grayscale buying Bitcoin, what does it really mean? Is there a true intention behind actually being, uh, actually having meaning or impact on price, especially in the bullish case, right? So just do some more research and, and don't fall into the trap of you know, falling into these headline articles by Cointelegraph, which is, you know, as of late, they just put out garbage. And especially people randomly on Twitter writing posts about Grayscale buying Bitcoin is bullish. Read the actual explanations behind it, you know, from people like Ryan Watkins. Um, uh, he uh, has done research at Misari, which again, done, does uh, on-chain capital, I'm sorry, uh, on-chain uh, research, right? So these are the people that you want to listen to, okay? All right, um, let me see here. Okay, so let's go back to Bitcoin, all right? So in today's analysis, I think I'm going to just take a, you know, uh, eagle's eye view on what's happening. And so we've had a end of the month and end of the quarter, right? So we put out our typical July monthly open candle, or I mean this marker right here, all right? So the marker right now stands at 91.32. The weekly open from Sunday opens at 91.14. I stated this before that whenever price is above the monthly open or even weekly open, it, it's typically bullish. And bullish, I mean that <clears throat> for now, it's doing a good job of staying above those markers and chances are high that it could potentially push higher if it just stays above those markers. Well, why do I say that? Well, historically, the way Bitcoin has been functioning, all right, is that uh, whether it's the algos or people defending the July or any monthly open for that matter, um, they typically don't defend it only to have it broken, you know, um, couple days later or a couple weeks later, right? If they're going to defend it, they're going to defend it hard. Um, if it's supposed to be a level that's going to get broken, it typically gets broken in like the first, you know, few days of the month, okay? Or like right near the tail end of the month. And I'll show you guys an example. So this is June. And I think June starts right there. And obviously June ends way the heck over here, right? So as you can see, June opened right there, price held all the way above the June monthly open. But then finally we smashed through it and used it as resistance over here, tried to break above it again, got sold off. Again, tried to break above it, got sold off, okay? And only did we break below the June monthly open um, right around June 12th. And over here, we definitely broke below it and haven't looked back since around June 24th. So. Now that we're looking at the July monthly open, okay, a simple way you could look at this is you could say, okay, well, you know, price has pretty much stayed above the July monthly open or above the weekly open. If you want to take scalp longs, right, this is all you got to do. You got to just put your stops below both of these or below this area or below this wick. And you could potentially go from here and maybe aim towards something like this. Okay, so let me show you guys exactly how you could look at this from a range perspective, okay? So if we're looking at this from a range perspective, this is how you wanna look at it. This is the larger range right here, okay? This is the first key SR level, 91.95. If you don't get above this level, you have no hope of getting up here. So as long as you stay below this level, it, things are bearish, okay? Uh, meaning that you could, very well head down towards range low, which is way the heck down here around 9,015 or so, okay? But again, like I said, weekly opens right there, right? So if you stay above the weekly open, you're doing all right. If you stay above the uh, July monthly open, you're doing all right. But you're trapped between a key resistance level right there, 91.95, and a key support, which is the weekly open and the 
July monthly open, all right? So not a whole lot you can do at present moment. So if you're taking a long right here, it's, uh, it's probably a bit more aggressive because you have overhead resistance right there, 91.95, you know? So your scalp is basically, you're entering at 91.41 where price is right now. Your stop is at least down here around 9,025, maybe a little bit tighter around 9,070, and you're aiming for a $50 move up. So it doesn't make sense, right? But if you get above this area, 91.95, and you hold, okay, as you can see, once we started breaking down from here with this red candle, we haven't been able to close above that area, okay? So it's a very critical area that you wanna watch. So waiting above this area would probably move price up towards this key X or this key X. And why those X's? Because that's where the short side liquidity sits, okay? And this is where we had this last wick before big sell off. So I could probably say that there's probably a good amount of liquidity sitting above this area. Now here's the thing, if the bears are truly strong, which they've clearly made their case that they are strong, um, they're not going to allow price to get above this area. Uh, and if it does, you know, we might easily get up here. Okay. Uh, but if it does move above this area, I could see this X being tackled, this X being tackled and possibly get towards the range high and getting above the range high would be definitely a bit more tougher, okay? Because here's the thing, right? You have this big sort of high volume node, as you can see, that stretches out all across. And by the way, this comes from way the heck back here. Okay, so let me do this. Stretch this out. So this high volume node sits right exactly at this range high. So, you know, getting to this area, yes, possible getting above it, quite tough, all right? Now, I'm not saying that just because there's some high volume nodes and all this key support and resistance levels, it doesn't mean like they're brick walls, okay? Um, it just implies that there's definitely more supply that has been pushing us down for the last several weeks, and it would be a bit more difficult for us to move up through it. Now, it's always possible that some whale or some entities decide that, well, you know, these walls are pretty much meaningless and there's more liquidity sitting up here. Um, whether they want to load up on their shorts or squeeze out these shorts right here or make some easy money from here, a couple hundred dollars up, it's very possible. But until then, I think it's still a safe bet to be short. And I have been short uh, for several weeks now, just enjoying sitting in my position, collecting funding uh, and not really having to do a whole lot in our community let me see here so i've told you guys that you know i've been swing short for a while i even let my members know this was like last saturday that these are the targets that you want to take 88 85 and 84.99 um, i cut 25 percent of my position right at 88.63 so pretty much exactly you know right where i mentioned it you know so cutting that position by 25 percent made uh made me feel better because i got to pay myself and reward myself for holding on to this position for so long and guess what price is again at 91.44 so it's 300 dollars above where i cut it you know so i can re-add to my position uh which was cutting you know cutting it by 25 percent or i can wait just in case price goes a little bit higher and i'm wrong and thinking that we're going to break down then i can add even higher understanding how to cut down your position, take profit, especially where to take profit is immensely critical. Because if you're too panicky in situations and you don't hold on to positions um, either to see them through in terms of validation or towards their target profit based on technicals, um, then you're basically leaving money on the table or you're giving back money to the exchange or other people, okay? So I think this is you know one thing that we do really well is um, you know state out markers exactly where we're looking to uh, take profit exactly where my stop's going to be you know how exactly we're we're seeing this market sort of develop and based on that we make some pretty good decisions of um, you know, trading this market on a day to day basis okay so for the most part I would probably make the argument that 
you know, as long as uh, we stay below this blue marker, which I've mentioned, goes back all the way over here uh, in May 2019. I actually put this on my Twitter feed, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is, right? You could see this marker goes way the heck back here, you know, Res um, resistance, support all the way, resistance, you know, resistance, support, resistance, support, support, and now it's turning into resistance, okay? So where we are right now is a very key area, and, you know, staying below this area, which is this blue marker, is, uh, has, has typically led to double-digit breakdowns, or once you climb above it, you know, double-digit movements back up. But as long as we're under it, not only that, I think we're under the daily pivot. Well, I guess we have a new pivot now. Yeah, we have a new pivot now, right? Because remember um, the June pivot, let's go back, turn this on just for yesterday. Oh, that happened, Let me turn this on. Let's just do this. Number of pivots back, can't just do this. There it is. Okay, two. Okay, got it. All right, so June right there, that was the June pivot. July is right there, right around $9,400 or so. Okay, so it's possible that, you know, maybe we can even get towards 9400 and then start rolling over because that would be the July pivot. But for now, all right, we are well below that pivot. It's very possible that from here we start rolling down. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's check out the ES right here. So it's, you know, ES is looking all right. I think over here, everyone was a little bit concerned. Uh, let's see what the heck is going on. Uh, I think everyone over here was concerned about, you know, this falling wedge potentially failing right there. Um, but the one thing that I saw, which I mentioned to my community members, as long as we make it from uh, make it above this area, we're probably going to get to this area right here. And so that's, you know, pretty much what happened. Um, not only did we make it to this area, we broke out this falling wedge and we pushed up higher and we hit this descending trend line resistance right there. Okay. So if we utilize this area right here as support, which is this 3060 area, uh, it's possible that we break out of this descending trend line and we had towards a range high around 3,150. And so again, so far Bitcoin has been moving with the ES. Um, and if that's the case and the ES pushes higher, it is possible that Bitcoin also pushes higher. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Bitcoin broke structure when it started breaking through this 9,200s area. And so now I'm a bit concerned that, okay, well, it's actually already, you know, broken through key uh, support. So it's very possible that it just kind of keeps sliding down from here. And that, you know, the ES could easily keep going higher. But what could also happen is, you know, Bitcoin gets towards this $85, $8,600 support. Um, and the ES kind of, oops, the ES kind of does something like this, what it's doing right now, and then starts pushing back up. And then while at the same time, you know, Bitcoin can go from 85, 8,600 back towards 9,400 like that. Okay. So it's possible that, you know, both of these things could happen. All right. It's not necessary that they have to move perfectly together. It just might be that, well, Bitcoin might only start uh, trailing the ES as Bitcoin recovers from this 8,586 level on the way back up. But again, you know, we're only at 9140s, haven't quite done any substantial breakdowns yet. The one thing that you want to see, all right, on the four hours specifically, is you need to see this low right here get taken with a close below that marker. So we're at that marker is right around 8892. I have pointed out to our community that this is a potential bullish SFP and that's something you can long. Okay. And so I think some of our community members did long that or they were just aware of it uh, and didn't want to short here. In either case, you know, this was a pretty helpful candle because it got us to visualize this as, okay, well, this was a wick low. This pierced below it, but it didn't close below this wick. That is the definition of a bullish SFP. And then you can see the next candle also closed above and then we kind of took off a couple hundred dollars. 
Okay. Um, let's check out GBTC real quick. So, you know, I've been talking about GBTC for a little while. Whoops. GBTC, I can't type right now. Okay, so I've been talking about GBTC for a little while. And I mentioned, you know, the middle Bollinger Band, the 34 EMA, second right there. All right, and once we started breaking below both, I stated that more than likely GBTC is going to slide further. And that's exactly what happened. We broke below this key support as well, 9.98. And so where we are in terms of price should equate to Bitcoin spot prices somewhere around like, I don't know, uh, at least 8,000, maybe $8,400 or $8,500. Okay, based on where GBTC prices are. Now, I don't know if they're always in sync or if one is lagging and one is leading, um, but in terms of just basic equivalence of GBTC shares and GBTC premium prices, 9.60 is equivalent to about, you know, like I said, $8,500, $8,400 or so, okay? So, you know, uh, where we are right now should equate to more of a move down. Now, GBTC sl slides down further. I can't imagine that Bitcoin is going to break up. It, it would just be very odd and, you know, it just wouldn't make sense. So we'll see how today's day goes for GBTC. I mean, this is an inverted hammer. This is a, a previous hammer. And so these two both denote that if the next candle is a nice follow-up bullish candle, well, then we're probably going to push higher. Okay, it's also possible that we hit this previous support as resistance and then start rolling down as well. well. We'll see how the rest of the day goes, but I'm still bearish on GBTC overall. You know, these internal movements up and down cyclically uh, don't really matter because I think this structure right here was clearly denoting to me that this looked like either distribution or just, you know, weakness and demand and we were going to roll over right here. And we did. So we should now start seeing reflection in the Bitcoin spot prices. Okay, that's pretty much it guys. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoy our content. Again, I'm gonna be doing uh, more content only for Advantage members. So if you are interested, uh, come join. We stopped our 50% deal. That was over uh, June end. And uh, yeah, let me see. Oh, uh, actually, I think I forgot to talk about the monthly candle. So, so here's like the monthly, right? It's kind of like a doji. I mean, it's really nothing special. Um, although, if see, here's the thing: in this monthly candle, Bitmex is the only exchange that has this low wick. Because remember, we went, you know, we had this random day where we went all the way down to eighty six hundred. All right, that's only on that exchange. If you look on this Bitfinex monthly. It looks much different, okay? Let me see. So you can see right here. So you can see here, the body is closer to the bottom with very little wick. Versus here, you can see, right? There's, you know, wick almost equal size to both sides. Well, I guess the you know, top side of the wick is much greater. So, I mean, I think for the most part, this is definitely a doji. I would have liked to call it a Greystone Doji, but doesn't really meet the criteria of that. Typically, Greystone Dojis have very like uh, very little wick at the bottom, kind of like this one actually. But I like to see them at the top of an uptrend. You know, this is just one candle and then big red candle. I like to see them like, you know, multiple green candles and then a huge you know red candle with the high facing wick, small body right at the bottom. Um, so in either case. Um, this is a doji, pretty much an indecision. And, you know, I think with volume going down overall, I think uh, I would probably figure that this candle right here, uh, the, the next month is probably going to be a little bit more uh, bearish. But we might have, you know, a slight push up maybe towards 9.3, 9.4, somewhere in the middle of the month with some scam wicks, and then maybe start rolling over. Uh, and then same thing with the quarter. Um, you know, People talk about this being a, a bullish engulfing. Um, if you're only looking at the body, yes, that is a bullish engulfing, but you know, this, there's a lot that took place down here. And so that kind of doesn't really, to me, denote a bullish engulfing. 
Um, but in either case, you know, we've done this before, like right here, but we still put in a lower high as per this 20K high. And so this to me doesn't mean anything unless there's follow through to the upside, which again leads us back to this huge resistance level around 10,600. Until you break above that, no point in having bullish discussions. Okay. Uh, just for me, it's just enjoy my short, uh, collect the funding. Uh, and if I find scalps here and there for longs, you know, take those. I haven't been that successful in scalps in this area. Uh, I don't know why, but you know, I think shorting has just been much easier. So I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing best, which is just having, you know, um, my short on and whenever I get a push back up, I'll just add on to that. That's it guys. Hope y'all enjoy the content. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, let me know your comment and your thoughts on what you think uh, Bitcoin is going to do over the next month, over the next quarter. And come join our free Discord. The link is below. Until then, take care. Cheers and have a good rest of your week.